Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This video is going to add details and further directions on a previous video I made. It, the one I'm referring to is called the A to Z Christmas Craft Challenge. I had the letter M, and in that I made an advent calendar. I showed how I did the box, and then I showed how I made a little bit different style journal for the inside. And I've had a couple questions on details and options, and so that's what this is going to be about. I've also had some other questions and I will answer those at the end, but at the beginning, I'm gonna start with just the construction. All right, the concept for this one is it's a journal, but it's slightly different journal. Many people don't care to sew in signatures uh, for, for a variety of reasons, and understandably, because it's really hard to line them up and blah, blah, blah. But a single signature journal, especially if you're using heavier weight paper or uh, thicker elements on your pages, it, it's no secret. If you watch my channel, you know I like really thick, chunky things. And it can be problematic with creating a gator mouth journal and a journal that doesn't lay flat. So I kind of combine those two issues to create a journal that has three sections, or it could be more, of course, to a single signature to allow you to not have to sew in, you know, 10, 12 pages to the center to your signature, which also can be problematic as far as keeping things straight and lined up and that type of thing, but also more challenging to have your journal eventually lay flat. So the idea is you can have a single signature, but you can have different sections that you're adding on to create more pages and more depth without having to create one really large single signature. So I'm going to go into details with that. Mine is designed for my December daily this year. And part of the reason I did this, and I'll show you really quick here, so it's only a minor squirrel. I made this December daily uh, in 2019, so several years ago. And I absolutely love this journal. It's got all kinds of cool chunky bits and I used repurposed Christmas cards, but it has a five inch spine. And even with that five inch spine, my pages don't lay flat. And part of the reason for that is the thickness of the pages, the items that I put on the pages, and the fact that my spine isn't flexible. And that's key. A flexible spine allows your pages to lay much more flat. So you can still keep a harder cover and have pages that lay flat. Like when you get into this journal, you know, look, it, it, this is as flat as it goes. So sometimes it's really tough and you can see the gap. I mean, I've got almost an inch gap between the signatures, but because each signature has several pages, they don't lay flat. And so it can be challenging to go into the pages and see what I have included. And I wanted to avoid that this time. So that's that's where the idea came from and that's kind of where this is going. I'm, the things I'm going to change are the amount of pages within each section. Those are signatures. This is going to be a single signature with sections as well as the spine. The spine will be a flexible spine. Covers will be firm chipboard, but this, the spine itself will be flexible, and I'm hoping that that allows it to lay more flat. All right, and again, this is mostly just um, additional option and, ad and additional information about how I created this. So for this particular book, I used cardstock because I had some that I wanted to use. It, this is the craft paper, and it happened to be eight and a half by 14. I cut it down to the eight and a half by 12. And I did that because I wanted to be able to, my grandkids are coming this Christmas, and I wanted to be able to include photos. And I wanted to be able to include two four by six photos on each page if I chose to. And that's kind of what this format, this size gave me. But honestly, you can make it any size you want. It doesn't have to be a specific height or width. That's completely up to you. So on the previous video, I showed you that I did three, three, and three. Three sheets of paper per section that are going onto one signature. But then I had to add additional pages, and I'll show you how I can do that, how you can do that after it's all done. Because I didn't account for the way I'd glued the pages together. So I did something slightly different this time. I'm doing three sections, three in, three pages in the front section. 
I shouldn't say three pages because there's a lot more than three pages. Three pieces of folded over paper per section. So I've got three sheets of eight and a half by 12 paper for this section and three sheets of eight and a half by 12 paper for this section. And then I used four sheets of eight and a half by 12 paper for the center section. And I put on my insert. And that is, the insert is so that you can glue this directly into your journal on the inside and you don't have to have the seam showing on the outside if you choose not to. Because I've created this glue page for want of a better term, this glue page will glue directly inside the cover of my journal. And because it's on cardstock, I, it'll have some flexibility and then I'm going to put fabric behind it. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully most of the pages will lay flat. Now, time will tell and I'll come back and review it after I do all the things at Christmas. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to sh show that how, how, how I've come up with it. Yeah, all right, so this time I was wise and I made the center section, which I showed on the A to M or the A to Z Christmas video letter M. I showed how I sort of did it, but I've got a little bit more detail and a little bit more option with this one. So I'm, I didn't sh didn't create this. I desire I did this in advance so I wouldn't have to create it on camera. And the same thing with this one. One of the three sections, but I'll do the other section on camera so I can show you the process from start to finish. All right, so here are my three sheets of eight and a half by 12 paper. Again, the size doesn't matter. And here is my pokey page. I The glare on that is just awful and I apologize. Let's see if I can alter it a little bit. Hopefully that'll go away soon when I get my new craft room. But, but in the meantime, here you go. All right, personal preference. Because I want my pages to match up when I'm putting them together. Now this doesn't work nearly as well if your pages aren't all the same size or if you're doing several pages for your center signature. But because there's only three sheets here, this works beautifully. I'll just take a bit of low tack tape, I call it purple tape, and I'll tape the pages together. So that way I'm sure that the edges line up. Then I take the pre-formed whole template and I'll put that in and I'll use that with paper clips because I wanna to remember to be able to easily take that out before I sew, use the thread to sew the signature together. I shouldn't say signature, sew the section together but that it'll keep it lined up while I've got it in my cradle. Now, if I didn't have a cradle, I could use just what I've got here. I could take my awl, and again, for those who may not have watched that, this is a knitting needle tip, and I use it to keep my awl covered. You can get these on Amazon, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, and I imagine any knitting shop would have them as well. So if I wasn't using a cradle, I could just use what I've got here, make sure it's straight up and down, and poke my holes. Again, it's not really thick, so you don't have to worry as much about pages shifting or making sure your poke is straight and not at an angle. But I have a cradle, and I use the cradle, so I'm going to do that. You can use, uh, I know several people use a book, a heavy, like a... Oh, what are those things where the phone numbers are in? A telephone directory? Yeah, that's it, a phone directory. You can do that, but this is just as easy for me. So I'm using my template to pre-poke all my holes. Okay, and so that I've got holes in there. Pull that away. And now a lot of times what I'll do while I've got it here, just to make sure that I, because I just it's a light poke and I want my holes to be a little bit bigger, I'll push that through where I've already poked, just because it's graduated, so it makes the holes just a smidge bigger. And I'll do that. All right. Cap on the needle, or the pokey tool, I should say. And then I remember to remove my template because you don't wanna sew that into your section. And then I have pre-threaded my needle. And personal preference, you can start from the outside 
or the inside. I like a five hole pamphlet stitch, so that's what I do. But if you're a three hole pamphlet stitch person, that works fine. Um, different Coptic stitching, what, whatever, whatever. This is just a really simple, common way to bind your, your sections. And then I use those holes. And I just leave the tape on while I'm doing this and it makes sure that my pages don't move out of alignment. And I showed on the previous video, I don't have lotion on my hands now, so it's not such a big deal. But if your hands are slick or it's hard to pull the needle through, just get a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers and use those to pull your needle up through the holes. It works great. And I don't worry overly about it being tight and snug because I pull it snug at the end. So now I'm going towards the bottom. And I know there's a ton of videos showing how to do these pamphlet stitches, but for anybody that wants to just, you know, come in and make a December daily and use this formula, I wanted the, the process to, to be here to show you. And uh, again, personal preference, some people go back down the center hole and then wrap it around and then come back up. I do not. I tug a little bit to make it sure it's snug and then I go through the, the hole that's, or the, the, the string or the linen thread that's just like slightly above it. Sorry about that. As I as I tug this, it wiggles the camera. And then I'll tie, I usually go with three to make sure that it's nice and snug. And please excuse my, I know my hands are kind of a hot mess, but I've been staining, I'm creating a new craft room. And you know, really, I need to blame that on Gail Augustinelli, who reorganized and repurposed her craft room. She changed her the location of things, which made me think I really need to do mine. And that is all Carrie the crafter's fault because he suggested it to Gail. So ultimately it is Carrie's responsibility that my hands are hotness because you know, that's just the way it is. All right, and then I'll clamp that off and I've got the section that I'm going to include to my signature. It's in and ready to go. Now, before I take the tape off, you will notice you've got some displacement. I don't know how well you can see that right here. And it has to do with, I used cardstock and they're all the same size to start with. So as I'm laying one on top of the other, it kind of, the top piece will move back a little bit. And the more paper you have, the more common that is. So what I'll do before I sew anything in, just because it's easier, I want them to be mostly flush. I don't care if they're perfect, but I do want it to be more flush than it is. So I will lay it down flat and get a straight edge. Now, some people use their trimmer for this. I find that I get a nicer, more even cut with an X-Acto knife and a ruler, but you know, either way, do what works for you. And then I'll come trim that edge before I even put it in. And it's card. this is thicker cardstock, so I may not get it all through my first pass. I'll come back and pa go give it another pass, and then that lines up my edge for me. And I've got little bits everywhere. I'll move those out of the way. Now I'll take, take off the paper, or the tape that I used to hold it together. And I'm, my pages are all nicely lined up. I went with craft cardstock for a variety of reasons. For my December daily, t uh, Tracy Fox from Love Junk Journals, Tracy Fox Creative, is doing a December daily tag making event. And in fact, I even wrote down the name so I didn't forget exactly what she's calling it. It is... Well, I, didn't, I thought I wrote it down. Here it is. Um, um, December Daily Advent Tags. So she's got tags for all the days of 
the December daily, and it's the Christmas Collaboration Day. And I'm participating in that along with some amazing people. I'm doing tags for day seven and day 20. So I, I'll, I'll share the information as we get closer, but I would encourage you if you're you know interested to definitely check that out. Tracy's made an amazing kit, which is available in her Etsy shop even now. And um, those are the pieces we'll be using. Okay, so I finished this section. Now I've got all three of my sections. There, each section is independently sewn, but I've only got one that's sewn and going to be inserted into my my journal itself. So these are ready to go. What I showed last time is once this was glued or adhered into the journal, then I added these sections to create the signature. And I, my suggestion was, you if you want a side pocket to glue the back edge, the bottom and the top. And if you want a top pocket, you'll glue the two long edges as well as the bottom. Because I did the other one in top opening, I'm gonna do this one as a bottom opening, or I'm sorry, a side opening. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different that I think will add a little bit more flexibility to it. Not required, you can just glue it down exactly like this and you're good to go. But what I did here was I took one inch, it could be one and a half, it could be three quarters, whatever. I took one inch strips of cardstock and folded them in half. And what I'm going to do is glue these strips to the back edge. And because I'm going to make this a side opening, I'm going to glue them to the bottom and the top. And the reason I'm doing this is it'll give us just a little bit more flexibility. And rather than doing going right to the edge of the fold, I'm going to put my glue maybe quarter to an eighth of an inch in. And I want quite a bit of glue not because I want it to seep out, but because I want it to have a good firm hold. So I, I could measure it. I could mark a line on here if I wanted to, to make sure that I got the glue exactly where it needed to go, but I'm not that particular for this part. If I needed it to be, then I would do it, but it doesn't need to be. So I'm gonna glue that, put quite a bit of glue on because I want it to hold well. And then I'm going to lay this down on the edge with my sewn piece. I'm going to put it down right there. And right there. I'm, I, I essentially am creating a gusset or a little extra room. And while that's drying, I'm going to clamp it down just to make sure it stays nice. But something to think about, I put quite a bit of glue on there. Now, you can see right here, it's poked out the edge. If I put this clamp right here, what's gonna happen is my top piece will glue to my bottom piece, which negates the whole purpose. So I'm going to come back and make sure that I don't have any glue seepage. Now that's ultimately not gonna show, but I just don't wanna glue the top of that hinge to the bottom of the page. That's gonna go on the next page where I attach these two to the center signature. All right, and just, you know what, I don't even really need to clamp it, honestly, because it's down there. I put quite a bit of glue. And this is gonna be covered, so it's not gonna show, so if you've got a little bit of extra glue there, not a big deal at all. All right, so I've glued one piece down. Well, you can see there's the glue there. And then I cut them all to the same length and width and such. So I'll have to trim it down because the bottom isn't as wide. But I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom and the top. Again, I'll put about, I want the fold, the folded bit to be at the bottom of the page and then the folded bit to be at the top of the page because that's what's going to create my gusset. Again, about, it doesn't matter. You know what, it really doesn't matter as much on this piece, but about an eighth of an inch or so away from that folded edge is where I'm putting my glue. And again, I want the folded section towards the bottom of the page. 
And if it doesn't go all the way to the very end of the page, not a big deal. And you can see here, it doesn't quite touch. Again, not a big deal at all. It's still more than sufficient to hold my page in place. Sorry, the clamp to my phone is on the edge of my desk. So anytime I wiggle the desk, the phone wiggles. And in my new setup, I'm doing something a little different. So hopefully that'll be alleviated. Plus my new room has a window, an actual window in it. So I'm hoping that some of the glare that exists in this room won't be present there. Well, we will see. All right, so I've got two done and now I'm gonna do a third. I'll do it, I did this, the inside edge and the bottom. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the top. Just roughly measure it and then trim it down. And I'll glue that into place. Again, I'm gluing. I want the folded over edge to the top of the page. So I know I'm reiterating that, but just in case somebody doesn't hear it the first time, that, that part's kind of important. And like I said, the glue, where you put the glue, could you use dry line tape, like score tape or uh, red, red line tape? Sure, you could. I don't like it as much because it has zero wiggle room. So if I don't lay it down in exactly the right spot, that's it, it stays, it stays where it lands. So I tend to use glue as opposed to tape. But I'm gonna do the same thing. Put this right on that top edge. And this is non-directional paper, so top and bottom is subjective at this point, but eventually top and bottom will matter. All right, so I've got those three pieces on. I'm gonna make sure they're dry. But what that's going to do is it's going to allow me a little bit more flexibility and a little, more, little bit more wiggle room when I glue this into the, when I put this section into the center signature. And normally I put the center signature into my cover before I glue these subsequent sections down. It's not required, I just generally do it but I had an idea with some bits of lace that I want to do for the cover, and I'm not 100% sure what I want that to look like yet. So what I did is I really love this plaid, gingham, green gingham plaid, it's not plaid, Corey. Green gingham is in Tracy Fox's December Daily Advent Tags kit as a solid sheet, and I love this. So I am going to use this. So you can see here, I wanted a two inch spine because again, I intend to put a lot of pictures in here, so I wanna give it room, but but this section isn't very big. So one, when I've got the cover ready to go, this section will be, I'll score it and score it, and it'll be, I'll score each edge so that it matches this section, right? So I'll score it here and score it here so that it folds and it provides a nice solid colored signature holder, basically, a glue sheet, glue space. But um, yeah, I've, I've got some lace that I really think will be pretty as a cover. And then I'll put one of the images that she's got in the kit on the front or a tag or something like that. And then I'll use this to make my closure, these pieces here. And I may reinforce that. In fact, I probably will. I'll reinforce these for the closure and then it'll be able to be a belly band closure so you can tuck a piece of paper down and then it'll have the design element here. And I'll, when, I'll show it to you when I do my December daily pages. Okay, so, but this is just the base, the book that I'm gonna put into the December daily. Okay, so I've got, I've got the, these should be plenty dry now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue this section on to my center signature. And again, these little shimmed pieces, inserts, gussets, what have you, they're just gonna give me a little bit more flexibility into where, how much, how much expansion I have. And notice I'm, again, really careful not to put it all the way up to the edge because that'll tighten your flexibility and I want to create more flexibility, not limit it. So I don't know, fourth between a fourth and an eighth 
if you wanted to measure it or if you're happy you're measuring you can absolutely do that and i'm not huge a huge measuring fan and so then i'll just line these up and hold them in place and all i'm doing is taking my new section and gluing it down to my center signature I generally do the back uh, spine piece first and give it a second to dry. I do the spine piece first simply because I can make sure that it's lined up correctly top and bottom and then I'll come in and glue the two bottom sections. Now this will create a pocket for you and you can see here this sticks out a smidge and it'll stick out a smidge there. So. What I can do is come in and take a corner off. I'll just cut it down like that on the top and the bottom. It's not required, but you can because now it won't show when the gusset is open. And you can see right here, it's just a smidge over the edge, not even really. But I'll take that off just, to, just in case it shows. And I will glue them down. To this sheet. Now, I could take a divot out of this before, or either front, back, or both, but this is big enough and wide enough and thick enough that I can easily get my circle punch in there and take a divot whenever I want. And because I don't know yet what tag I'll be putting on this page, I'm going to wait to take my divot. I'm not limited that way in what I can do with my tags, because she's got tags for each day, and I'm going to alter the tags a little bit each day, make them into pockets, make them into tucks, make them into foldovers, that type of a thing. So I want to have the option to make it the way I want it, which is why I'm not divoting it now. But I'm gonna glue this together and I'll do the bottom and the top at the same time though, because of the size of this, you don't really have to. The smaller you make it, the more careful you have to be as far as when you glue what but because this is, there's enough gap between this, I don't have to be super particular. All right, I've got the glue, and then I'm going to close it on up. Now this part I will clamp simply because you can see how it's folded. I wanna make sure that it dries tightly. And I could use, I mean, I don't have to use these as a clamp, right? I can use the quilt clips. It, does, it doesn't really matter. Use what you've got. I could use the purple tape, you know? You know what? In fact, I will. I will use the purple tape. They're the low tack tape. The idea is just to keep it together while it dries. Mm, use what you have. Use what you want. Now, the nice thing about the low tack purple tape is that it does not tear the paper. It can it? Yes. And I've had it tear like really old, fragile, delicate papers. Okay, that's a mess. Um, so I say use that with caution. Sometimes I'll rub it over the sweatpants material on my um, on my pants before I put it on to make sure it's not overly tacky. But then I'll just leave this, leave this to dry for a bit. Make sure that my hold is good before I let it. I mean, glue is fabulous stuff, but you have to let it set or dry before you're guaranteed that it'll do what you want it to do. That's another nice thing about using cardstock for my base. Um, it's sturdy, and I wanted that. Okay, so I've got my one of my three sections glued to the center signature. I only, I sewed each section together independently with the five hole pamphlet stitch, but the only one that is actually sewn into my spine is the center. Could I have sewn this in? Sure, and I could have had a little bit more of a gap and it would be a little bit more flat, but I wanted to try this. And like I said, I'm gonna chunk this up. One, so that um, for people who don't like to sew a lot, they have this option. And two, to see how well it works. I mean, is it gonna give me the flexibility that I want? Is it is it going to be too much like a single signature which makes a huge alligator mouth and doesn't lay flat? I don't know, we'll find out. 
Then I would do the same exact thing. I've got these sections and you don't need to see that detail. I've got the same exact sections and I'll do the same thing. I will glue them to the third section that I'm putting on my single signature. Same process, I'll top, bottom, side to side. All right, and that is the insert for my December daily. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'll finish that up off camera. Oh, shoot, I just dropped it. Darn, now that, okay, excuse me for a moment as I try, see if I can do it. Um, try to reach across here and pull that up because I wanted to show you something that I did with the previous one that I didn't show on camera. It's kind of an option. Let's say you need an extra page. I mean, maybe like I do my December daily rather than just up to Christmas. I, because I'm a teacher, I do a lot of things after Christmas as well. And that's when my grandkids will be here. So I fully intend to take several pictures. And so I wanted to do 31 pages. But sometimes one page isn't sufficient. So maybe I want a two-page spread. And so maybe I need more than the standard one page per day, right? And I imagine that's going to be the case. My sister and I are going to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Last year, we went to Chicago for the Chris Kindle Market. And this year, we're going to Lancaster County before Christmas, after school is out, but before Christmas for a few days, just to kind of, you know, do a little bit of pre-Christmas fun. And we're actually going to go to New York first, so we can go to the Harry Potter store. Total bucket list item of both of ours. Uh, we're both Ravenclaw too, so we, we fully intend to get some Ravenclaw paraphernalia. And then we're going to spend time in Lancaster. So I imagine I'll take pictures and I want to be able to add those. Again, par part of the reason for the size of the journal that I chose. But maybe I'm going to want a couple two-page spreads. Or maybe I need just an extra page. Or maybe I need a pocket page so that I can add, you know, more photos. If I don't want to glue the photos down, if I want to just pull, put them in so that I can take them out as needed to look at, here is another option. So I've got another page with the same length, right? And then I'll fold it in half again because all my others are folded in half, though you don't have to fold it in half. I'll fold it in half. And I probably have a bone folder around here somewhere. I do. I'm in the process of redoing my craft room, as I mentioned. But I'm repurposing some of the pieces of this desk for my new desk. It'll be wider and it'll be a little bit longer. But I'm repurposing some of the base pieces and I'm repurposing some of the wood. So I've taken a section of this apart and it's, it's kind of wobbly. Anyway, sidetrack there. All right, so I've folded another section in half. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to cut the piece that's going to be my addition or add-on, I'm going to cut it down. And it, it, if you want a really long, deep pocket, just cut trim a little bit off. If you want a more shallow pocket, let's see, this is about six inches, so maybe I'll go halfway. I'll go to three. Just not because I had anything in, planned in mind, but I'll cut that off. Now I've got a three-inch strip to do another item with or another project with if I choose to. And then I've got this section right here. And what I'll do is I will glue this section down, just like if I'd had the hinges on it, right? Like with the hinges I just did. But I will glue the top folded side and bottom down to make a tuck spot. That also gives me another page. You can do that as many times as you want. So if you need two or three more pages, you can add one of these to each section. You can add them to between the sections. You can add this concept anywhere, and it works really, really well. Can you do it in a regular journal? Sure, I don't see why not. But it's just a way to add an extra page. Now, it is a pain. I'm an inker, and I know not everybody is. But it is a pain to ink once you've glued. So I'm going to take the time right now and ink this. I apologize for the sound. I know not everybody loves that. And not everybody's an inker. So if you're not an inker, if I wanted to glue a piece of, or sew a piece of lace on, that would be a great time to sew a piece of lace on before I put it in. Um, if you were going to put a large belly band or something, you know, if, if you wanted to do something along those lines before you glue it in is your best choice. 
but I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. But I do know this back section, I'm going to be busy those last two weeks of December. So guaranteed, I'm going to need a little bit of extra real estate. So I've inked my edge, and now I'm going to glue it down on the folded spine, the top and the bottom. And again, I never go directly to the edge, though you could, because I want the flexibility of being able to gape it a little bit, you know, to pull it out. And then top and bottom. It's just a really easy way if you need one more page or a couple more pages or what have you. So then I will line this up to fit inside my journal. And it's not really as tricky as it looks. I just have the camera here. So the camera's in my way. So I made sure that's kind of flush there and that it's flush here, top and bottom. I just laid those three glued edges directly on top. Oh, and you can see my page size is a little bit different. I obviously, oh, I know why. Duh. Because I took, um, this was an eight and a half by 11 sheet, not an eight and a half by 12 sheet. So that's why my page is a little bit smaller. But you know what? That's a fixable thing. I can, see, that's that was... This, you can see the colors just slightly off. This was just regular craft paper, so it was eight and a half by 11. So because I cut, um, I folded it in half, instead of being the six inches, it was five and a half inches. And, you know, it could be problematic, right? It could be, but it doesn't have to be. And I will show you why, though I got glue out there. All right, so you can see here, that created just an extra page. But I blew it, right? I made my page a little bit too small. Well... I will take that extra bit that I cut off and, you know, I would really score it, honestly, be, to make sure it's straight. And let's see if I have a scoreboard. I do. And it looks like I was going to score that at right around one and a half, even though this is a two inch, uh, two and a little bit inch section. I'm going to score it right, right where I started to fold it. And... I'll finish scoring that. Okay. That didn't work so great because I can't see where I've lined it up. There we go. Okay. Scored that. It just, it's easier to fold once you use a score line. But you, again, if you're not using such thick paper, it's just as easy to fold it over and not square it. Okay. And I use my bone folder again because it is a thick piece. All right. Not the same, right? On both sides, totally okay because I want a thinner profile on one than the other. These are going to be t little tuck spots. Or I could just glue the whole thing down. And either way, maybe I'll do a tuck spot on one side and glue it down on the other side. I don't know. These would be really cute little side pockets for a belly band or for uh, little little small tags as tucks. So I'll ink those two the, because of the, where the fold is, these will be the outside edges that show. And I'll show you what I'm doing to fix my, my mistake. I could just leave it. I could glue something else on. I could sew it on, I, or I could just, you know, make it a half inch shorter. They don't all have to be the same size. But if I wanted all my pages the same size, which I do in this particular journal, I'll use this section. Okay, and now I will tuck it. I want the deeper tuck on the outside. So I'm doing the thinner, narrower bit on the inside and the deeper bit on the outside. Okay, and I will put glue just on the edges, uh, not the edges, no, Corey, the top and the bottom edges. I'm not putting any glue in the center and I'm not putting any glue on the edge. If I wanted to glue the whole thing down, then sure, I could do that, but I don't want to. I want to have the option. Later on, if I don't want to use this as a tuck spot, I can put glue there. But for now, I want to have the option and I'm going to lay it down on my page, right? 
and I'm going to match it up with the edges. Here, let's take this out so you can see. I'm gonna match it up with the edges that are already in existence. That way my pages are the same size. I shouldn't say the same size, the same width. All right. And if I wanted to, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I'll put right here in the center, just put some glue down and I will make a center pocket. And I can stitch that later if I choose to or not. And so it gives me, it gives, gives me the opportunity to have it lay a little bit more flat. And now I have two little tuck spots. And my edges are now matched up. And I have a little bit of a tuck spot on this side. Honestly, though, because it's so narrow, I'd probably just glue this whole thing down because it's a really narrow, shallow tuck spot. I'll just glue the whole thing down and then put a belly band right here, an edge belly band or something, so that it doesn't show that. But even if it does show it, it's totally fine. It's a good, good decorative element. But you don't have to. You can make that a little narrow tuck spot if you want. But realistically, I will glue this whole thing down to make it sturdy. But that extended my page so it matches with the other pages. So there you go. And that is that. Again, I'll show you once it's completed and I do this um, flexible spine and I use the lace for the cover. And you can see here, it gives you on your spine just a little bit more flexibility and a little bit of room to wiggle and pull and hopefully have this mostly lay flat. Okay, oh, there's tape on there. But that is that is my construction and those are my tips. All right, done. More detail on the single signature three sectioned advent calendar December daily piece. All right, what else is coming up? Okay, I had people ask, about a no sew signature. I shared this journal, the Simple Snowfall, absolutely gorgeous kit by Tracy, just a stunning kit. I had people ask how there's no sewing. I sewed the plastic on the top because that's the look I wanted with the snow and such, but there is none of the pages are shown it, sewn in. It's a no so signature. So I will have a video coming up very soon. I'm going to film them all today so I can finish disassembling my desk. But video coming up very, very soon about how I created this look. And again, you can see it lays as flat as I want. And these are thick cardstock pages. I mean, these are super duper thick. Um, and they have pockets on the top. So for journaling or photos or what have you, right? Whatever you want. Oh, I'm not going to worry about that now. But I'll show you how I created that, the no-sew signature. I'll also show you a way that you can do the same type of a no-sew signature or no-sew journal with envelopes. I'll show you that at the same time, um, you know, some of the options with that. So there's a couple no-sews coming up. I mentioned that I'm participating with Tracy's um, Advent Tag. Oh, let's see if I can move that out just a little bit. She does a box, but I want to I want to use the tags that I create inside my December daily journal. So I've done it a little bit different where Tracy has each day's components in a little individual bag so she can make them one at a time. What I did is I cut out all the similar pieces. So her flashcards, I put them all in one spot. Um, fussy cut items items that are able to be fussy cut. I put those all in one spot. The extra tags, the tag bases are all in one spot. The numbers for each day are in, in one spot. Um, the solid paper pieces, the off cuts from where I fussy cut, the little labels and domino covers are in there as well. Um, she did a freebie on her Facebook group of different Christmas words, and I know I want to include those, so they're all in the same little bag. And again, here's the fussy cut pieces that I can add to the front and then the longer tags, and then the solid pieces. So I've got all that ready to go. And you could, and, and maybe should, I should say, follow along with what pieces for that day in the kit, 
follow it, use it. But I wanted to have some flexibility because I'm not going to just make a tag. I'm going to make my tags be a little bit more interactive for the most part. Not always. And I wanted to be able to put them on whatever day I wanted to where it worked inside my December daily journal. So a lot of flexibility within the kit as well. And then I have my two days, December 7th and December 20th, prepped. And so you'll get to see a little bit of a sneak peek. There's, there's the December 7th. Pearl Harbor Day, for those of you in the U.S., Pearl Harbor Day, and then December 20th, what I'm going to do with those, and those pieces are all prepped and cut and ready to go and showing how I make my tags for those days. So that those two videos are coming up. The Simple Snowfall, No sig Sewn Signature Construction is coming up. A um, couple other things that I wanted to mention. One Sheet Wonders. I've got the pieces ready to go, but honestly... I'm not going to be able to film once I disassemble this, once I take apart, because I want to use the wood and then the side piece that holds my desk up, I'm going to repurpose that. So once that's done, I'm not going to be able to film until my craft room is done. And my craft room is taking me longer than I had planned. One, I was ill. I had pneumonia. And then um, I got a virus on top of that. And then, you know, if I were teaching online, I could have continued to teach because I wouldn't have gotten anybody ill. But I'm back to in a physical classroom and you know, not a good idea to go to school with a fever. Well, while I was out, I started to further disassemble the 1906 piano that I've had. I want to use the pieces, the inside pieces, the hammers, the, the keys, and some other elements inside of it for a STEM activity, science, technology, engineering, and math for my students. And while I was underneath it one day, I'd had a good chunk of it disassembled, but not all of it. And there's Older pianos have really heavy, heavy metal plates. It's why old pianos are so, so stinking heavy. Um, anyway, while I was moving it to get underneath it to disassemble the next section, the piano slipped on a crack in my sidewalk because it's on the side of my house. And it fell on me and it crushed my leg. Um, I say crushed because, well, my leg was double the size. There was no femur fracture, so for that I'm eternally grateful but I've had some significant issues with it since I did it a week ago, oh, just a little over a week ago. I find out this week, I'll meet with a surgeon, I'll find out if it's gonna require a surgical repair or if it will eventually heal on its own. But that has caused significant mobility issues and uh, being able to work in my craft room and be able to continue building most of the pieces in my craft room. Well, I should say half of the craft room is repurposing things that already existed. I use some pieces from this room. I combine some pieces. It's a different shape and configuration, and I want to utilize all of the space. So some of it I'm building from scratch, and some of it I'm repurposing. But it's because of that injury, it slowed me down significantly. So it's taking longer. And that's just the reality um, so the one sheet wonders won't happen until my new craft room is done because I won't have a place to film. So I apologize for that. But it is coming, I promise. Also, this morning I was listening to Julie at Camellia Craft Designs, and she is doing something that I think is totally fun. She's calling it Crif Christmas Craft, no, Scrapmas. Okay, well, me and scraps, I'm, I'm all for it. She's basically taking pieces that she's already got in her stash and creating a junk journal from her scraps. So she's building an entire journal from scraps, which I absolutely love. I had a viewer, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago, message me saying that they would love to have a piece that I'd created to put into their December daily. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. That'd be a really, you know, an inexpensive, simple fundraiser for people to, you know, one, support my students in our December activities. And two, if they wanted something that I'd created in their, their journal, it would be an insert piece. And I've got an idea for that. And it, it's kind of a different, a little bit different and kind of fun. But as I was watching Julie's video, <clears throat> I thought the same thing. How cool would it be if different designers created a different piece that could, you know, they could easily and inexpensively sell. And then people like me, I mean, I'd love to have a piece of jewelry from Camellia Craft Designs, something that she had made in my journal in those little Christmas craft button fabric cluster pieces 
would be a fabulous entry. And it would be meaningful to me because I enjoy Julie and her personality and, and her videos. And I always delight in watching them. So any of it, any video makers that are out there um, thinking, you know, if you want a little something to make and sell for Christmas, let me know because I would love to purchase, you know, just little bits and pieces to include in my own journal. I just think that would be kind of fun. Sorry, the heater. I'm, one of the benefits of this craft cave is it's um, shared space with the water heater and the house heater. And so every once in a while it kicks on. Anyway, that was that point I wanted to share with it. And in there, she met, mentioned um, a December daily by a person or a, a lady named that's on the channel, Meet the Shreds, S-H-R-A-D-S. -E and I've not watched anything, but it's a December daily option video thing that um, I'm going to check out. And if you're needing to check something out, I encourage you to check Julie's channel, Camellia Craft Designs, because she's going to be doing random bits and pieces using scraps through December. And then this Meet the Shreds is doing a junk journal theme December daily. Now there are lots and lots and lots of December daily videos. Many of them are more scrapbooking oriented, but it's a beautiful concept for um, junk journals as well. And that's essentially what Tracy's doing with her December daily advent tags. Uh, so there's another option for you to watch the people in Tracy's video lineup. And I think that's it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them below. And also, I love Christmas cookies. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the, the, my favorites are gingerbread and those, um, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on what they're called. I just mentioned it to my husband where you put the dough in a little cookie press and you press the cookie and you put little sprinkles on it and there's a name for that and it's, I just drew a blank. But anyway, um, if you have a really good gingerbread recipe or they're like a drop cookie, but through a press and it starts with an S and I'll be spritz. That's it. That's it. Spritz cookies. So, um, if you have a really good recipe for a spritz cookie or a gingerbread cookie, please feel free to add those in the comments below because I love those things and I would love to be able to make some good ones. Um, and maybe there'll be a treat in it for you or something. We'll see. So thank you very much for watching and my 20, 30 minute video has now turned into 51 minutes. I guess that's just kind of the way I roll these days. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you're well and enjoying this pre-Christmas season. Take care and happy creating.